I said, 99.9% .9 of the time that works as advertised and there isn't anything more you need to do. Um, so you don't have to worry about those, the federal loans. Private student loans can kind of go either way depending on the loan because they don't have federal regulations. Sometimes they go into deferment based on that information. Sometimes you still have to pay. So in that case, I would suggest you contact the servicer for any private student loans you have and see what see what the plan is for the loans you have with them directly. Um, I think that covers any pre-existing loans um, and how that will work. Um, so uh, I'm gonna move on to how you might get a refund um, at the start of the year. So if you borrow enough in financial aid, so if you get um, your total scholarships and loans are over your direct costs, so that means um, they're in excess of the tuition and fees that you'll be charged, then you will be eligible for a refund for those for those additional funds. Um, the, the, the budgeted items that those funds usually, um, we suggest they go to are living expenses, books and supplies, that kind of thing. Um, you don't have to show us how you spent the money or prove how you spent the money. That is, once you get the refund, that's up to you. Um, if you've completed all the requirements for your paperwork, um, for the loans and everything is done there, and you uh, sign up for direct deposit with the student accounts office, you can you would probably end up getting your refund during orientation. So 17th or 18th of August is when I expect that to happen. Um, I don't have an exact date for you because our office does not process those refunds. So I can't tell you exactly when it's gonna happen, but it usually ends up being uh, no later than that Thursday or Friday, which is again, during orientation. If you don't sign up for direct deposit, um, earlier in the summer, then you will get a paper check and we will still refund you. But that unfortunately takes up to three weeks to process from the time we disperse the funds. So definitely, if you're going to be depending on your refund and you need those funds as quickly as possible, um, you should definitely sign up for direct deposit. You will get information about how to sign up for direct deposit from the student accounts office when they send out your first bill, which should be in mid-July. You'll get that via email and mail at that point. And there'll be instructions there for how to sign up for direct deposit. Um, you can also look on their website now and do it. That's up to you, but they'll send you those that information um, in July. Along with that, they'll send information about Willamette's health insurance. So part of uh, Willamette's policy is that every uh, student here must have health insurance. So if you have health insurance through a job, through a spouse, through your parents, um, there is a process to waive the health insurance if you can show proof that you have health insurance through another source. So um, it, it's important for you to be aware that you will be charged for health insurance automatically, and then you will have to complete that waiver in order to have that charge removed. Um, you have to do that every single year you're at Willamette, just one time a year. So again, that information will be sent to you with your bill um, in mid-July and information about how to complete that waiver process will be listed there. That is not available now like the direct deposit is. So um, if you go looking for it and can't find it, you won't, it's not there yet. So there's a specific window that's open for those waivers. So keep an eye on that. Um, okay, we've talked about uh, refunds and where you should be in your loans and financial aid. I think the only other thing I wanna talk about is the possibility uh, of getting more financial aid than what I have offered or what our office sent you in that original award. So in the budget that we use for what you're eligible for, we estimate living expenses, estimate your books and supplies costs, and then we use the tuition and fees that we know are you're going to be charged for. If you expect your living expenses to be more than the already budgeted amount, which by the way is $2,024 per month, um, then you can request our office um, to um, award you additional financial aid. There is a form on our website called the budget adjustment form. And let me, I'm going to right now provide a link for you all. Let me pull it up here um, to the forms page um, where that is listed. And then um, that's where you would go to get that budget adjustment form. Um, and then that form can be used to request additional funds, not only just for additional living expenses, but for things like out-of-pocket medical expenses, um, child care, moving costs, computer purchase. There are all kinds of options there. So take a look at that form if you think you're going to need more financial aid than what you've been originally awarded. You would just need to complete the form, 
attach any required paperwork. Each subject has its own requirements for what you need to provide our office. And then um, submit that to our office for review. And, and I usually get back to people within a week. So you should be able to know um, fairly uh, soon whether you would be able to get additional funds or not. Um, so that, that would be my suggestion for that. Um, and then let me also provide you with my contact information in the chat. And again, I'm happy to answer questions here or in the breakout room, or you can contact me at any point over the summer and I can talk with you on the phone, email with you, Zoom with you, whatever works for you um, to um, help you with any questions that you have about the process of financial aid and, and getting all of that set up. So I think that's it for my spiel and what I wanted to make sure I talked with you all about. Um, so I think now would be a good time for anyone who has general questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Again, if it's a more personal question that you don't feel comfortable asking within the group, that is totally fine. We can definitely do that separately. Anyone? Um, yeah, I had a question. Uh... Sure about, I, I emailed, I forget who, um, someone who sent me a link to a list of all um, kind of extra scholarships you can apply for, just like with essays or things like that. Um, and I was looking through those and a lot of the deadlines already passed for them. Um, so it said like March 13th or something. And I thought this March, so I was like, oh great. But then it meant last March. Um, so for those, you kind of have to do it a year in advance, I'm assuming. And then do you guys know when those tend to like open up? Because they seem to close March, April, May, but um, I didn't know when they would reopen because they were closed when I looked at a lot of them. Yeah, so um, private scholarships and maybe Jessica, Leah, Jordan, if, if you have any other information, but generally private scholarships do what they want when they want. So it, each donor has their own timeline, their own way of doing things. Um, although it is, I'm sure, too late this year for any of those scholarships, um, if they don't require you to be an incoming law student, um, definitely um, keep them on your radar for future years. Um, I would suggest looking at their website to see if they tell you when they're going to open them up, um, or unfortunately, you could contact them directly or just keep checking back. There is no rule of thumb. There is no scholarships always open here and always close here. It's absolutely based on um, each scholarship donor on their own terms and how they want to process that. Yeah, so I would, I will second that, Shannon. Um, that's basically the process for that. Uh, I will say though that we get um, updated scholarship. They send us emails like weekly. So um, as soon as we see them, we put them on our page. So it is, you know, I think primarily a lot of it's closed, but I would still keep looking at it because we are still getting scholarship updates weekly. So um, just kind of bookmark that page and, and keep coming back and looking at it. Um, so we do try to process everything as quickly as possible. So as soon as they send us information, we try to get it up there. So um, you have that full opportunity to take advantage of. So I see um, that Kate question? in the chat asked a question, how does it work when you get outside private scholarships? How does the money get to the school? So that depends on the donor and how they do that. Usually it just is a check that the donor sends to the school with your name or, and or ID number on that. And then we would apply those funds to your student account um, from our office. Some do it differently and we can work with however they want to send it to us. But generally the funds are sent directly to our office, to the financial aid office, and then we would process those funds um, and put them into your student account on your behalf. And if you've already paid your um, expenses and you have um, no, no um, balance due on your account at that point, those funds would get refunded to you. If you have a balance, those funds would automatically apply to that balance. If you had previously accepted every dollar of the financial aid award you were offered, and then we receive private scholarship funds from an outside donor, we are required to reduce the loans that you previously received um, because those funds were received by our office. Um, so just keep a, you know, keep a idea of that in your mind that it, you won't always automatically get the full funds back as a refund um, because in some instances we are required to reduce the other aid you've gotten but please keep in mind that uh, $1,500 of scholarship is much better than $1,500 of loan and in the end you are still definitely getting out ahead of that. Any other questions? 
Oh, okay, so someone said you mentioned a website checklist for loan applications. Could you link that here? Yes. So um, what I suggest you do is go to portal.wamit.edu and I will put that in the link. And then um, there is a one of the blue boxes on the top um, says self-service. And that's where you would go um, to look at your financial aid. So once you click on that blue self-service box at the top of the portal, you will see um, financial aid as one of the options. And once you click on financial aid from there, the checklist will be in that first screen you see. You can also use um, any links we've sent you to view your award from your award letter or revised award email. You know, any of those emails have a link to that same place as well. Anyone else? Shannon, can you just mention once again, um, when you anticipate the disbursement to arrive for late folks and we started recording late, so I'm not sure if we got that on the sure, recording Yeah, or so if you, all the requirements for your loans have been completed and if you have signed up for direct deposit with Willamette University, uh, then um, you can expect to receive your refund. Usually it's the Thursday or Friday before the actual semester begins. Um, for you all, that will be during orientation. So I believe that's the 18th or 19th. Um, let me just check the calendar to be sure. Yeah, the 18th or 19th of August. Now I can't guarantee that's the date you're going to get it because again, our office is not the office that actually processes those refunds, um, but that's generally when they process it. And you can definitely get in touch with student accounts when we get closer to that. Um, date and they can give you uh, maybe a more specific date at that point, but that is usually the latest that they would process refunds unless there was some other issue going on. All right, thank you. I just posted in the chat um, the external scholarship opportunities that Hannah brought up, so it's in there. So if you guys want to just copy that, um, you'll have that information for for quick at your fingertips as you're trying to figure out you know which ones you want to apply for for next year. <laughs> 